and then our second song by praise and worship team again and then we'll hear um, a sermon and then we'll close out with benediction um, so now we're going to have Michaela come up um, for prayer hi everyone is it on? is it on? okay please bow your heads with me in a word of prayer Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for letting all of us wake up and allowing us to see this day because some people couldn't wake up today. And so we just want to thank you for that. Thank you for letting us come here today to get here safely, to let the rain hold off a little bit. And I just pray that what we learn here today, it just won't go in one ear and out the other, but that will actually like incorporate it into our daily lives and we can tell more people about it. And I just pray that we have a good rest of the day and... Yeah, that will just keep you in our thoughts and prayers, and we can just use you to have, like, a better life to show others about you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. This first song we're going to sing is just talking about um, just God being who he is. He doesn't have to do another thing, doesn't have to give us another blessing because he's already done so much. So just join us as we worship God because of who he is. Amen. Amen. Because of who you are. I give you glory because of who you are I give you praise 
things that you have done. 
us and I'll just see it and I'll receive it and, and I'll slander. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk that by it by, that by it you may grow in, up into salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious. You yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Sorry, I'm multitasking. Um, <laughs> um, so next we're going to start with, um, we're going to have meet and greet. So we're going to have three minutes to get up and love each other and welcome each other, starting now. <laughs> Somebody said that one three minutes. Hey, that timer on my watch say three minutes. <laughs> That's why we got to put it back up on the screen because, you know, 
Hey, people can't tell time, right? Amen. Amen. It's so good to be in church, isn't it? Amen. It is so good to see everybody. Uh, I just want to uh, welcome you to service this morning. It is a blessing to be together. I'm blessed because when it's raining outside, people don't go to church. Just real, just let's keep it 100. Yeah? When it rains, people don't, they be like, I don't know. But <laughs> my hair will get messed up or whatever that look like. But y'all came out today, and it's a blessing to have you here at service. Uh, I hope you felt the love of Jesus this morning. hope you feel the love of one another this morning. If you didn't, uh, anybody get, I think I got like one, one pound, but I did go in the back, so I, I'll give you all some slack. Sometimes I get forgotten, so, you know, it's, it, it, it's all good. Yeah, let, get, y'all get past her air hug, air hug real quick. Yeah, 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 okay. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Real quick, real quick, I want to uh, welcome any first-time guests this morning. If you've never been here before at BBCC, do me a favor. Just raise your hand so we can see you and acknowledge you as a first-time guest. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah, look at God. Look at God. Yeah, I I did get a chance to meet everybody, but I want you to do me a favor. If you are a first-timer here today, you should have gotten an orange card that looks like this. It just says, I am a guest. If you did not get one, put your hand back up, and we will get you one of these cards because we want to give you a gift today to thank you for coming out to worship with us this morning. I would like to meet you. I've got something I want to give you, and I just want to be able to just lay eyes on you for a second if that is okay. But at the end of service, bring me this card. I've got a gift I want to give you uh, just to officially welcome you and thank you for coming out to church. It's not an accident that somebody invited you. Uh, God orders our steps, and we believe that uh, you are planted. You are right where you need to be. So we are grateful for our first-time guest. Um, I want to give a shout-out to all of our young folks. Today is Youth Sunday. Uh, Let's give it up for them real quick, just in leading, leading the service. Uh, When my daughter, Kara, saw her name as the worship worship leader, she looked at me like, hey, and I looked at her like, hey. You know, so, but she did a fantastic job uh, just letting the Lord use her this morning. Uh, It's also really good to see Raven up with the praise and worship team. Yeah. Just just using those gifts. I mean, we're going to have a choir before we know it, you know. (laughs) We had to build a platform or something. Uh, But we are just so grateful for what God is doing here at the church I'm also, also, I want to wish a happy birthday to Kirsten Bright. Uh, She's not here today, but we want to just shout her out uh, this morning. She uh, turned 13. Can't believe it. I remember when these kids were babies, and now they are teenagers. So that means that they are getting old. It means they're getting old, and I'm getting better. They're getting old. Uh, But my my middle girl will be turning 13 in June. So y'all, just pray for me. I will have two teenagers. Uh, and I am not ready. I'm not ready. Uh, but we do want to. And if we got anybody else who had a birthday this week or anniversary, we want to just shout you out and love on you as well. Uh, if we ever forget you, please charge it to the head and not the heart because this is a place that we celebrate people. We don't just tolerate them. And this is a place where you are loved and celebrated. So happy birthday, Kirsten. Also, also, I want to uh, introduce or uh, share with you our Serve the City campaign that we are starting. Uh, this is a community church. So we focus on the outside, not just the inside, right? The church has four walls. There's a church on every single corner. But we are designed to impact, to be the hands and the feet of Jesus. So our outreach committee, uh, if you're on the outreach committee, do me a favor. Just uh, put your hands up real quick so we can recognize and see you. I know it's a few folks on the outreach team. Yeah, and all of them are not here today. uh, But Randall has been working with that team, and they have been working diligently to put together a calendar of events so that we can serve. And the the name of our campaign is Serve the City, right? We want to be the hands and feet of Jesus out in our community. And we have several areas in the month of May that you can actually serve. Uh, They're going to be ongoing events, but in the month of May, it's going to be a a lot going on uh, in the month. Actually, we're working on four different things right now. We got three of them solidified. Uh, So the very first will be at Cooper Elementary School, which is uh, not far from here. Uh, Tassie goes to Cooper. Jaden goes to Cooper. Uh, And Miss Albia, if you know her, she is the principal at Cooper. So we partner with Cooper Elementary School, and we're going to be out there cleaning up uh, the ground. So anyone can volunteer for this. It will be May the 6th. Um, There's actually a QR code that you can sign up. So I see some folks taking pictures. Uh, We will continue to showcase this. We will put it in GroupMe as well. Uh, But we want people to sign up for these events because this is an opportunity to serve out in the community. And I am challenging every member, if you are here today, 
to pick one. Everybody say one. one. To pick one of these and participate. Members, non-members, lottie dotty, and everybody, right? It feels good to serve, right? You, you may not realize it, but we were not made to be a lake. We were made to be rivers. There's a big difference. A lake only receives water, right? But if you have a pond that only receives water, the wrong stuff starts to grow in it. But you are, if you are a river, things flow, right? You can drink river water, but don't drink that nasty pond water, right? So understand something. I ain't even preaching yet. Uh, but this is, so for Cooper Elementary, they were going to be on May the 6th. And then on May the 13th, we will be with an organization called Sleep in Heavenly Peace. Uh, we're going to be putting beds together uh, for different kids who need beds uh, out in the community. So there's also an opportunity to serve there on May the 13th. And then May the 20th, uh, through May 31st, that means according to your own schedule, you can volunteer at the Habitat for Humanity Restore, uh, either as a, a floor assistant, a cashier, uh, or something like that, right? You just go and show up, and they say they'll tell you what to do. Uh, but those are three areas that we can serve the city. There is more coming. But again, we want everybody to do at least how many? One. one. All right. We don't want to come looking for you. We want you to find some time and space to do at least one. And I promise you, you will be blessed as a result of it. Today, today, we got a lot going on today. Uh, after service, we're going to have uh, one event that I'll, I'll announce here in a second. But this evening, we are having our couples ministry fellowship. We'll be right here at the church, amen, from five to seven. Uh, so we are going to be out here, and that is for married couples and engaged couples. Right, so we're going to have a potluck. We're bringing food in. We're going to hang out. We're going to pour into each other, and we're going to have a good time. Right, from 5 to 7 p.m., we will be right here. And now you don't have to be a member of the church for that as well, but you do need to be either married or engaged, right? Uh, so, you know, if you're, in, if you're in high school and you got a boyfriend, you can't come. Right? You, you, no, you can't, you, you can't. That ain't for you. Uh, but our couples ministry will be here uh, today. And if you got a boyfriend in your high school, I need to talk to him. I need to see him. Yeah. Anyway, that's a whole other sermon. Okay. Uh, also, also, right after service, we are going to do, yeah, look at Gwen. <laughs> she over there, ready to roll. Our very own Sister Gwen will be leading, she will be leading a powerful mental health session right after service today. And the topic will be why therapy. Right, so this is powerful because we all got baggage, we all got issues, we all, all got things going on. But she is going to help lead us to figure out if we are good candidates to enter into therapy, right? Uh, it's okay to have Jesus and a therapist. It's all right. It is perfectly okay. I'm not the kind of pastor that's going to tell you, well, baby, you just need to go in the corner and you pray about that and it's going to be okay. No, we're going to give you some tools. We're going to give you some Jesus and we're going to give you some tools. So Gwen is going to talk about that today and I'm very excited about it. She uh, has all the credentials, all the experience, and she is funny and better than me. So I'm looking forward to what she's going to be talking about. So make sure you hang back. That will be today right after service. We're going to start at 12 o'clock and, and go for about 30, 45 minutes up to an hour. So make sure you, uh, you hang back for that. Uh, and with that being said, we are going to conclude the announcements, have the praise and worship team come back up one more time, and then we're going to get into the word. Amen. Let's welcome them as they come. It's good, amen? Amen. amen. Uh, this song we're going to sing now is new. And I don't know if y'all were here a couple weeks ago, but my nerves are still bothering me because I jacked the song up. So y'all just continue to pray with us. No, for real, because God is truly good. And we're up here because we want to give him our best praise. Amen. It's not about form or fashion. So if, I mean, we just want y'all to just join in the worship with us because that's what it's about. We're trying to connect the service to Jesus. Amen. Amen. So good. 
all to you, God, right now. Hallelujah, God. Just continue to move throughout this service, Holy Spirit. Bless Pastor as he comes and delivers this word. Prepare our hearts to receive it. We know it's going to be good, God. Help us to receive it and use it, just like Michaela said. We just thank you, God. Have your way, God, in Jesus' name. Just right where you are, just let's just stay in that moment of worship just for a few seconds. God, you've been so good to us. And even when it didn't feel like it was good, it's still good. You promised us that all things were working together for our good we love you we believe that we are called according to your purpose you've been so good you've kept us from seen and unseen danger you've kept us even when the enemy tried to take us out You have been our provider. You have been our protector. You have been a very present help in times of trouble. Where would we be without you? And in this moment, right here, right now, we just want to pour out our praise. Take the fruit of our lips. Let the words of our mouths and the the meditations of our heart, let them be acceptable in your sight. Lord, we're coming to you this morning and we don't have all the words and all the right amens and we don't know all the terms, but God, we just want to say thank you. We realize, God, that if we don't cry out, the very rocks will cry out. Your name is great and is greatly to be praised. We honor your name. You are King of kings. You are Lord of lords. And in spite of everything going on in our lives, we bless your name because you have been so good. Hallelujah. 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 Let's give his name glory and praise this morning in this place. Oh, we bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. Amen. 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 I'm going to try to go ahead and get ready uh, to preach this morning, but God is good, y'all. He is so good. He is so good. He is so good. Let's, let's go ahead and uh, dismiss the kids. We do have uh, fellowship for them this morning in the back, all of our uh, elementary, middle, and high school. That's everybody. If you are a kid, elementary, middle school, and high, you can make your way to the back uh, for a youth service this morning. Um, it's fifth Sunday, so they're going to be, they might be a little bit turned up back there, so... Uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on back there. We're gonna, they, they're having a Fifth Sunday Fellowship in the back. But we're going to get ready to get into the Word. Um, we're going to pray here in a second. Uh, but as they wake the, make their way to the back, if you are a guest, if you're a first-timer, uh, one of the things that we do with our sermons is that we have fill-in notes. Uh, you should have gotten one of those, uh, those pieces of paper. You can fill in as we go along. Um, I always tell people that it's okay to cheat in church uh, during the sermon. Uh, You can uh, look to your neighbor's paper to get the answer if you don't have it. We care about you getting the information. um, And, uh, yeah, just make sure you look over and get the right answer. If you don't get it, though, come to small group because we go over it again in small group. Uh, You know, and uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. We're in the midst of a series. We just kicked it off. It's called Walking in Discipleship. 
walking in discipleship, and we believe that we are called to make and multiply disciples. That is our theme here at the church this year. Uh, and, and today we are talking about spiritual infants. We began to kick that off last Sunday, uh, talking about being a spiritual infant, which is the very first stage in the discipleship process. Uh, and that's not a bad thing. If you are a spiritual infant, it is not a bad thing. Uh, we all start somewhere. And today, 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 we're going to talk about how do you grow and mature. But before we get started, uh, I want to pray. So let's look to the Lord real quick because I need his help to deliver to you what he has given to me. So God, thank you this morning, God, for this moment. Thank you for the opportunity to be together, to worship you as a body. Uh, God, we come to you this morning, Lord, reg- ready uh, and anticipating this moment of you speaking into the lives of your people. God, I pray that you would give us ears to hear, open our hearts to be receptive, and, and even almost as more importantly, Lord God, give us hands to put into practice what we learn here today. Father, I am praying and believing you for multiplication of disciples, for maturity of disciples, and for the church to be the church as you intended and as you designed. God, hide me now, Lord. Allow me to decrease so that you would increase. And Lord, in this moment, I pray you would get all the glory. Transform us for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. If you've never been here before, we talk about this subject of discipleship a lot here at this church. We want you to understand what discipleship is, what it means, because Jesus didn't call us to go and make members of a church. He said, go and make disciples of the church. But I want to ask you the question. Uh, Today's sermon title is, do you need some milk? Do you need some milk? Now, now I know we've all, we've all uh, lost and wasted time on our phones looking at videos. Am I right about it? I mean, the reels that they come up and they have TikToks and all of these viral challenges. And uh, one of them came out. It was called the Milk Crate Challenge. Y'all remember the Milk Crate Challenge? (laughs) Prayerfully, nobody did the Milk Crate Challenge. If you did, don't raise your hand because you you might be limping today. But uh, how many of y'all know the Internet is undefeated? It's a saying. They say the Internet is undefeated. And, and, And oftentimes... People will decide, I'm going to make this video, I'm going to try this thing out. Uh, and they do dumb things, don't they? They do dumb things. But somebody typically has the camera out to catch you at your worst moment. Y- y'all remember, what was the other challenge? People would hop out of the car, and they would start dancing, and it was the, they put the heart up. Uh, I don't remember what it's called anymore. I, I think it's a little bit older. But they would hop out of the car, do a dance, and next thing you know, the car might crash, right? Uh, the Internet is undefeated, though, isn't it? And, and, and sometimes... People see these videos and they're looking and they're like, where's his friends at? Where are her friends at? Why did they let her do that? Right? They're like, "Uh, what was he thinking? I mean, surely it sounded like a good idea when this person went on top of all them crates. And they're like, I'm going to get all these views, all these likes. But then they came crashing down. And the thing about it is life is undefeated. You know, and the thing about it, though, uh, is that sometimes in life, we have a habit of trying to figure life out on our own. Do I got anybody in here who hates math? Okay, wow. Man, I like it. <laughs> okay. So you see this math problem up here. It's like they give you Pythagorean theorem, four centimeters, three centimeters, and you're supposed to find X. Some of us got PTSD right now. I'm not, trust me, I'm not going to make you solve for X right now. But what did they do? They, they, the problem said solve for X or find X, and they said, here it is. Here it is. That, that's your answer. How many of y'all know that that's not how it works? You understand that that's not how it works. Well, you know, my son is not here this morning, so I can talk about him. Um, he's at a track meet, so I can preach about him this morning. Poor, unfortunately for my kids, they end up in all my messages. Poor things, right? Uh, but, but, you know, prayerfully, Gwen, that's not a bad thing. You see talking about therapy, and then one day they say, well, you know, uh, you the reason you're here is because your daddy preached about you so much. But, but one thing about my son, one thing about my son is that he doesn't like to show his work when he's doing math. And he tries to figure it out in his head. Well, the problem in trying to figure it out in his head is that oftentimes you're forgetting how to carry the one. You are missing steps. Uh, And when you try to figure it all out in your head, you've got everything you need, but you try to figure it out on your own. Anybody trying to figure out life on your own and you're getting the wrong answer? Like, why is my relationship this way? Why is my money this way? Uh, Why do I feel this way? That's not how it works. I want you to understand if, see, I tell them over and over, if you just use the paper 
If you just show your work, if you just follow the steps, you will get the right answer. And I want to submit to you this morning, if, if you want to be a disciple and you want to grow spiritually and you're trying to figure things out, God's already given you what you need. He's already pointed it out in the Holy Scriptures, and he's already listed out the steps. He's already given you the principles. But so many of us, instead of following the principles, instead of doing it the way he says, we're trying to figure it all out in our heads, aren't we? Uh, well, if, if they did this to me, uh, this is how I'm going to react. The Bible's clearly telling you to do it this way, but we try to figure it out in our head and do it this other way. And we wonder why we're getting a 30 on the test of life. Y'all ever got a 30 on the test before? Don't raise your hand. Don't, some of y'all math folks are like, yeah, I got a 13 in geometry right now. Uh, but <laughs> let, me, let, me, let, me, let me give you the bottom line. Let me give you the bottom line. The bottom line is this. In order to grow up in your salvation, in order to grow up in your salvation, you need spiritual milk. You need spiritual milk, right? And, and as a, as a uh, we're going to see here what Peter is writing. We're going to use his text uh, as, as our premise of, of our discussion this morning. But in order to grow up in your salvation, you're going to need spiritual milk. You need this milk. Uh, as we look in, in 1 Peter 2, 1 and through 5, it says this. It says, so put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. Put all of that stuff away. Instruction number one, put all that stuff away. But then it says, like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk. Long for the pure spiritual milk that by it you may grow up into salvation. So if you want to grow up into salvation, you need what? Spiritual milk. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. See, today in our worship, didn't we taste that the Lord is good? I, I mean, it feels good to be in his presence, to taste that he is good. But he's saying if you tasted that he is good, now you got to grow some more. See, we're not just saved to sit we don't just come to sing a song, feel good for a moment, go out and say, girl, we had church today, right? It is about growing in our salvation. He says, as you have come to him, a living stone rejected by men, my God, but in the sight of God chosen and precious, you yourselves like living stones are being built up as a spiritual house to be what? A holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. That's your definition right there. The purpose of you being a disciple, you're support, we're being built up to be a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, and to offer sacrifices to the Lord. When they were up here singing, they're offering sacrifices. When you are over there on the, on the door, right, uh, being a greeter, you're offering spiritual sacrifices. When you pass out an invite card, you're offering spiritual sacrifices. When you sign up to go and clean up at Cooper Elementary, you're offering what? Spiritual sacrifices, but you got to be built up. See, here's the thing. As spiritual infants, the very first stage we're talking about, and we, this is review, right, but some of the characteristics of being a spiritual infant and against being a spiritual infant is okay because we all have to start somewhere. But some of the characteristics are ignorance, confusion, and dependence. Today we're going to talk primarily about the confusion that happens when we are not being fed and defined with spiritual milk. So again, the characteristics are ignorance, confusion, and dependence. So here, Peter gives instruction. First of all, he says, put aside some things. Put aside some things. Get rid of all of that junk. But in, after you get rid of it, start to long for pure spiritual milk. Now, the Bible, the Bible talks about spiritual milk. It talks about the Word of God using some terms like bread, uh, using some terms like milk, using terms like meat. Uh, and Jesus said that man could not live on bread alone, physical, uh, physical bread, but he had to live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. In other words, you need the word of God, right? You need it. And, and here he's saying, like a newborn baby, long for this pure spiritual milk. Now, the thing I want you to do here today, I want you to start reading the labels of life. Uh, and, and the thing about it is the Bible has many benefits. If you pick up a bag of Doritos and you look at the label, it will tell you what is in it. Now, the USDA requires that every food that is sold have a label, right? And on that label, you'll find mononucleotriglyceride. You'll find uh, sugar, uh, high fructose corn syrup. You'll find everything that's listed in there. You will find what's in that label. 
But some of the labels of the Bible, and this is a very short list, it's much longer, but the Bible will feed your soul, right? The Bible will give you wisdom. Some of us looking like, how do they get so wise? So you don't have to wait until you're 97 to be wise, right? You can be wise at 15. If you apply what the Bible says, if you let the Bible guide your steps, you can be wise. The Bible has enjoyment, right? We just talked about tasting and seeing that the Lord is good. The Bible will give you comfort in the midst of your storm, right? You're worried, right? It's got prescription for that. You're unsure what to do. It's got prescription for that. It will encourage you and it will guide you. Now, what would life look like if every relationship you had had a label on it? I mean, wouldn't it feel good to know that before I stepped in this relationship that, that Mr. Tall, Dark, and Handsome has got baggage, he's got drama, he's got all this kind of stuff. Wouldn't it be good if life had labels? Uh, before you stepped into that bad job, right, before you made that bad choice, wouldn't it feel good if it had a label, right? But we must understand that the Word of God is giving labels for many of the things that we are stepping into, but so few of us are taking advantage in reading the label. See the thing about the Bible. The Bible helps us to grow up, to grow up into our, sal- into our salvation. So Peter is telling us, he's saying that, that, that we need to desire this pure milk so that we can grow up into our salvation. You see, the thing is, when we get saved, we get identity and we get authority, but we've got to learn how to grow into it. Right? I, I don't know about you, and I don't want any of y'all to raise your hands, but we all got that older aunt or our mama or our grandmama who don't know how to gauge sizes. And they buy you clothes that you were too big for you, right? And what do they say? I ain't taking it back. You'll grow into it, right? I ain't taking this back. I stood in that line. You, you can grow into it. Uh, it's flopping all over the place. But the Word of God will help you to grow up into your salvation, right? And, and I want you to understand is that all of us have three parts. All of us, we are spirit, we are soul, and we are body. Right. Three parts. Three, you, every one of us is made up of three parts. Right. And you must understand. And this is a this diagram. I'm not going to go through all of it. We'll talk about it in a small group. But out here, you've got the body, the carnal nature. Right. This carnal nature is corrupted. Right. This carnal nature. There's nothing good that dwells in it. This is where the lust dwells. This is where uh, envy. This is where corruption. All of these things are in the flesh. In our flesh, there's no good thing. And so often we feed our flesh, but we are feeding our corrupt nature. Now, when you get saved, you get a new spirit. You get a new spirit. You are born again. And then the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of your spirit, okay? But we have this soul, which is where our mind is, where our emotions are, where our will, right, our reason, and that's where all the chaos is. I mean... You know, our mind is a mess. Our soul is a mess. That's where the work has to take place. You see, the scriptures, the more time you spend in the scriptures, it will transform your mind, right? The more time you spend in the word of God, your soul is being transformed. See, you and I have gates, okay? What I mean by gates, that's the eye gate, the ear gate right, the things that we touch, and the more we touch, we look, we taste, we are feeding either our carnal nature or we are feeding our spirit and transforming our soul. That's how easy it is. I mean, if I could break this down to its simplest forms, if you pull up your cell phone and you start to look up pornography, you are feeding your flesh. If you pull up your Bible app and you start reading the scriptures, you are feeding your spirit and transforming your soul. It's that simple. Benediction, have a good day. Right? I mean, some of y'all are like, amen, pastor, let's go home. <laughs> there's more, there's more, there's more. I ain't going to let you out that easy. Uh, but there's three natures, three natures. But here's the thing. As an infant, as an infant, a spiritual infant is often confused in what they believe. And, and, and sometimes, even as we grow older, is, you know, into children, young adults, we still have confusion. So the first belief, a Christian believes that, uh, I mean, a, a spiritual infant will believe that Christians make no mistakes. You, you really will believe that Christians, and unfortunately, some of y'all Christians have been a while, you portray it like you don't make no mistake. Guess what? Your stuff stinks too. Uh, Christians make no mistakes. But then on top of it, sometimes spiritual infants believe they have unrealistic expectations, right? Expectations for themselves, 
expectations for the church, right? Realizing that we are all human. We are all sinners saved by grace. We are all in a process. But, but if you don't know any better, you will think that I've got to be perfect. You will think that just to, to come up here and stand up right now that I've got to have it all together. You will think that before I go and sign up to do anything, i got to know everything. Right? No, we talk about do it afraid, fake it till you make it. Let God be in the midst because God works through your imperfection. But, but as, a, as an infant, if you don't know any better, you will have these kind of beliefs. But on top of that, a spiritual infant will be defined by culture and defined by their past. Pastor, what do you mean? And they'll say that, uh, and, and I deal with young people a lot, you know, and I, it's no, more time I deal with young people, they think that by a certain age they should have certain stuff. In other words, I'm 25, and, and I should be married, have a house, right? Or I should have traveled the world by now, right? As infants, we will have that belief. Some of us think that we're, we're supposed to have all of these things in a relationship. We will let culture, we will let Instagram, we will let social media, we will let our auntie, we will let whoever and anyone define what we're supposed to be. And we fall into the trap of comparison with other people, but understand that comparison is the thief of joy. As long as I'm looking at you and what you got, and, not what, and I'm not appreciating what God's given in my own life. Some of us as spiritual infants will be defined by our past. We think that I'm damaged goods. I've been through too much, right? There's no way God could use me. We think I've been hurt, right? And sometimes we, we experience church hurt. And we think that because we got hurt in, this, in one church, that all the churches are the same. Right? And, and we think that because you've had an abortion, because you've been bankrupt, because you've been divorced, that God can't use you. Right? But understand something, as a spiritual infant, we are defined by Jesus. We are defined by what he's done. And then lastly, lastly, the last belief I want you to understand is that spiritual infants often have a worldly perspective with some spiritual truth mixed in. So in other words, they, they, they got a little bit of scripture they remember from Sunday school, but they got a little bit of horoscope, they got a little bit of internet, they got a little bit of what they're talking about on the job. But as a believer, you must have a biblical worldview. In other words, you look at through the lens of Jesus and what he has already talked about in the word. And I understand this. When I look at all the chaos going on, it doesn't move me because the Bible's already telling me about this stuff. And it's already telling me in the end, we win. So here's the thing. As, a, as an infant, though, you are looking the wrong way. You see my man is supposed to be looking out, but he's looking on the wrong side of the telescope. Understand this, understand this. If you are going to run, you need the right fuel. And this is why you need to get the word in you. You need to be spending time in the word. And, and you know, I, I've, I've, I've been running races since COVID. You know, one of the things, one of the best parts about COVID was I got in shape, right? We couldn't do anything. We started walking. Me, Mike, uh, our day ran the wheels out there walking. I started running. But I understood something about running if I decide to run a 5K or a 10K, I can't get up and have biscuits and gravy and have pancakes, right? I need some bananas, some yogurt, right? And I, I, we, did a, we had a football camp a few weeks ago, and a kid showed up for football camp. He looked like a good athlete. He ran down the field and back one time and threw up. And I was like, man, what, what is going on? Did you go out drinking last night? I mean, a kid is 10 years old. I mean, you hungover? He said, no, they told me to eat a big breakfast. So we had pancakes. And understand, if you get ready to run a race, it's, your performance is going to be dictated by the fuel. And we've got to get to the spot where we realize if I want to be successful spiritually, if I want to have a successful marriage, if I want to have a successful ministry, if I want to be successful on my job, I've got to put in the right fuel. Now, you, you and I understand that you can't stay up all night long and go to work the next day. It, it just ain't going to work. So the question for us is how, how do you grow into your salvation? How do you grow into it? See, first of all, you need new truth. You need new truth. Then you need new habits, and also you need protection during your growth process. You need protection during your growth process. Again, new truth, new habits, and protection. So let's talk about new truth. First of all, with new truth, you must be daily partaking of God's word. Peter says, uh, he says, as like a newborn baby, you must uh, long for pure spiritual milk. See, this, this sermon is giving you something, but this is just a locker room. 
Y'all have heard me talk about this before. This is just a locker room. You got to go home and get into the Word for yourself. You got to study for yourself. You got to pick up that Bible for yourself. I, I, can't, I can't get you into heaven, right? You got to make your own decisions. I can't live for you. You got to make your own decisions, but it starts with daily partaking of God's truth. See, we, we have these devotional plans we send out, right? I mean, every small group is reading a devotional plan together. Every single one of them. And some people don't even acknowledge the plan. Some people don't engage with the plan. Some people don't read the scriptures, right? We're ignoring the very food that is presented. We've got to be in a spot where we are personally reading the Bible for ourselves. Our small groups are walking through the scriptures together, right? Literally preparing meals for people to partake of this word. So we need to really get new truth inside of us. But on top of it, we need to develop new habits, See, Peter, he starts it out. He says, hey, put aside envy, put aside slander, put aside all of this stuff. Get rid of it. And, and, and then start doing this instead. See, we all come with baggage. We all come with bad habits. But we've got to learn how to get rid of bad habits and start taking on new ones. See, the thing is, right, we want everybody to be attending church and to be attending small group. Why? Because when you come to church, you always feel better when you leave, don't you? Let me ask you all this question. Have any of you all ever spent time reading the Bible and left and like, man, I wish I never did that. I mean, anybody ever been there before? Like, oh, this was the worst use of my time. Uh, now, we might leave confused, right? But, but understand something. I've never seen somebody say, you know, I left God's presence and it was, I regret it. Because when you are in God's presence, you, don't, you, you can't leave out the same way you came in. But we want you to attend church and attend small group because when you're in these settings, you are growing and maturing. I want every member of this church to be in church at least three times a month, at least, minimum two, but I want you to be here three. You know, pull your toes back. Pull your toes back. <laughs> I, I want you in small group two times a month, right? You're going to see this more. I want you in church three and small group two, right? Make some mental notes, jot it down, whatever you need to do. But pastor wanted to see you that many times. New habits, serving, right? Because when you start serving, you realize that it's not just about me. When you start serving, you, that you were designed. You were designed to produce fruit. You were designed to, to go uh, and help other people. You were not designed to destroy yourself. See, because destroying yourself feels good up front. But the hangover feels mighty bad afterwards, don't it? We all been hangover before. And typically in the midst of a hangover, we, we look and we say, I ain't never doing that again. But unfortunately, Friday night coming back, ain't it? <laughs> See, the thing about it, we, we're supposed to be, I can preach a whole other sermon about that. Uh, but new habits, new habits, witnessing, witnessing, sharing our faithful people. Uh, and, and in sharing your faithful people, you're literally just telling them, I used to be blind, but now I can see. I don't know every scripture. I don't know, you know, Romans uh, 3.23. I don't know 6.23. I don't know Romans 9.10. I don't know all that. But I know I was jacked up. And I know God put me back together. And guess what? People can see that, hear that, and say, you know what? I remember you. I remember you smoking and drinking and, and drugging and all these kind of things. And if you change, there must be a God. Right? <laughs> but then there's giving. There's giving, right? Giving. Uh, all of these habits help us to grow up into our salvation. Now, the thing about it, the thing about it is that when we are, are, are infants, we're in this stage, we need protection. We need protection. Now, as a spiritual parent, a small group leader, uh, a mentor, whatever you find yourself as, your job is to protect. Now, you see this picture. Uh, you look and you see the baby. If you, I don't know if you can see it too well, but that's dad in the picture. And dad has a picture of who on, on his face? Mama. Mommy, right? Uh, the thing about it. When you are protecting, when you are protecting, your job is to lead to the source. Now, my children were all breastfed babies, so they weren't Similac babies. But I would have to get up with them in the middle of the night. You know, our, our agreement was during the week, mama got up, and on the weekend, daddy got up, right? And I couldn't wait to go back to work, y'all, because I was exhausted. <laughs> but when I went and got my kids, I had nothing for them. I could only get the milk from mommy. Or I had to bring them to their mother in the middle of the night so that she could feed them. Now, my job was to connect them to the source. Our job as disciple makers is to connect people to the source. And you and I must understand 
that I could rock them, right? I could support them. I could sing to them. We could watch TV together, but I couldn't feed them from what I had. I could only give them what mama had. And if you are trying to disciple somebody, your job is to connect them to who? The source. See, the thing is, the thing is, just because something looks good doesn't mean it is good. Now, I've read stories. I've never been shipwrecked before, praise God. Uh, but, but, it, but if you are out at sea and, and you're looking and you're drifting, all around you is what? Water. But can you drink seawater? Because if you drink seawater, something's going to happen on the inside of you. The, the composition of seawater, although it looks like water, you could be thirsty and water is everywhere. And some people, when they're out there, they start to go mad because they're trying to figure out I'm out here, I'm thirsty, I'm hungry, and everywhere around me is water. But the moment they start to drink that seawater, the crazy thing that happens is they actually get more thirsty. And it's everywhere. And because they're thirsty, they go and they, they do what? They drink more seawater. And the thing that looked like the answer actually will kill them. I want you to understand something. Some of us are lost right now. Some of us are looking. And we see all around us something that our flesh wants. And, and, and we go and we partake of that thing. But the thing that we thought was going to quench our thirst, it makes us more thirsty. And if we keep going after the thing that we thought was going to quench our thirst, be the answer to what we wanted, eventually it will kill us. So I want to ask you something. Is, is, this, is this getting old? Is this process getting old? I mean... I don't know about y'all, but when it comes to Monday morning going to work, I don't, I'm not like, yes, Lord. I can't wait to get there. Anybody like, I can't wait to go to work Monday. <laughs> if you are that person, I, we need to talk because you have found your purpose in life. <laughs> but, but, but the thing about it, my man Charlie Brown says, I'm already tired tomorrow. I mean, that's bad when you're tired tomorrow. Uh, but, 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 but the thing is, some of us have been trying to figure this out on our own. And, and in the discipleship process, we have not been consulting the word of God. We're trying to do it on our own. We're carrying our own one. Uh, we're, we're not showing our work. We're just doing it all in our head, right? Uh, and in doing that, it's exhausting. It, it, it's draining, right? Uh, and I want you to get to the place where you start to leave it to the expert. Now, up here, you see a picture of my man going into surgery. Uh, and, and, and he says, he says, he says, well, he says, relax, David. It's just a small surgery. Don't panic. And David says, but doctor, my name is not David. <laughs> Doc says, I know. I'm David. In other words, he doesn't know what he's doing. Now, how many of you, if you were getting ready to go under the knife and the doctor gave himself this kind of speech, you're going to say, yeah, go ahead and put me under. I'm going to sleep. Everything will be fine. Anybody signing up for that smoke? Nobody, nobody, right? We need to get to the place where we read the labels. We need to get to the place where we look to the right source. We need to get to the place where we are no longer letting people who have no idea what they're doing, including us, uh, order the steps and make the calls. Because if we do, we are going to end up empty. We're going to end up messed up. We're going to end up in a place where we never intended to be. So you might be saying, Pastor, I've heard what you're talking about. And, and here's, here's as I, this very week. I went home, and I hopped out of my car, and, and I looked. I was going around doing my normal walk around in the garage, all that kind of stuff, uh, get ready to go in the house, and I noticed my brake lights were still on. Key was out. Car was off. I was like, that don't look normal. Uh, and, and, and I looked, and my brake lights were still on. My son said, Daddy, the light's still on. I said, yeah, I know. Uh, and, and, and I was like, oh, that, that could be expensive, right, because I'm going to take my car in, get them to look at it, diagnose it, charge me money, try to get it fixed that I don't want to pay. But I said, you know what? Let's go to good old YouTube University. Anybody been to YouTube University before? 
I mean, you ain't got it. You're like, I ain't paying for this. I'm going to check it first, right? So I go to YouTube University, and I look up the answer. And somebody had already been through what I've been through. And they had a very simple fix. And what I found out was all it was was a simple sensor that wasn't making contact. Now, I want you and I to get to the place when we are trying to figure out life, we start to look in the right place. We've got to get to the spot where we start to look in the Word of God because the Word of God's already got the answers that we need. But so many of us, see, you are unique, but your problems are not. You might be saying, what you mean, Pastor? You are unique. You are not the first person to go through what you're going through. You are not. But here's the thing. I know you got a whole lot of questions. The pastor's telling you, read the Bible, read the Bible, just go to the Bible. And you might be saying, how do I read this Bible? Where do I start? I open this book, and I'm, I'm, next thing I know, I'm asleep. Anybody ever been there before? I mean, <laughs> next thing you know, you're done. Don't read Leviticus, okay? Stay out of Leviticus. It will mess you up. <laughs> Where do I start? How do I interpret everything's going on? Why can't I do the stuff that I want to do? Why can't I forgive people? Why, pastor? Why? 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 Here's the thing. I'm going to make this very simple, and I'm taking my seat. In the next 24 hours, in the next 24 hours, here's what I want you to do. I want you to find out what does the Bible say about it. See, you don't have to be a theologian to figure out what the Bible says about the relationship you're in. You don't have to be a theologian to find out what the Bible says about forgiving people. You don't have to be a theologian to, to figure out what the Bible says about what you should give, how you should conduct yourself, what you should say. It's all there. I mean, literally, Google. You can go on Google and say, what does the Bible say about cussing? And it will give you scripture after scripture. What does the Bible say about how a, a, a husband should treat his wife? It's there. Right? What does the Bible, I mean, Google literally can be your Bible study teacher. Right? So the next time, for the next 24 hours, because I know you all have decisions you are trying to make right now, don't you? We all got decisions we need to make. So for the next 24 hours, here's what I want you to do. 24 hours ahead of you. I want you to go. I want you to think of a situation you're facing right now. Even on your sheet, it's got some stuff for you to, to ponder as you're looking at this. For the next 24 hours, I want you to look. So you may be looking at a financial decision. You may be worried about something, carrying a weight around, trying to figure out what do I do next. So for the very next 24 hours, when that decision, I want you to just simply Google, what does the Bible say about it? If you're worried, if I got any worried people, say, what does the Bible say about worry? It'll probably point you to Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. It says what? It says, be anxious for nothing, right? Uh, but by all things, by prayer and supplication, make your request known to God. And the what? The peace of God which transcends all understanding, will do what? It will guard your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. Man, that feel good, didn't it? I mean, wow, don't be anxious, all right? Pray about it, uh, give it to the Lord, uh, and let his peace guard you. And then you experience it, you're like, man, that was good. I tasted it and I saw the Lord is good. But then the next, next week, guess what? I'm worried again. I'm worried again, right? But here's the thing. For the next 24 hours, I want you to Google what the Bible says about it. What does the Bible say about adultery? What does the Bible say about pornography? What does the Bible say about lying? What does the Bible say about how to do my finances? What does it say? And simply, when you get the answer... Just do what it says. That's it. When you get the answer, do what it says. What's that guy that he don't say no words, he just be like this. Right? Y'all know what I'm talking about? <laughs> that, I mean, just do what it says. Seriously. Because when you start to try to figure it out, you start to try to change it, you're getting in God's way. Here's what I learned. When I follow and I'm obedient to the word of God, it makes my decision so much easier. I mean, I got to the place where I was just like, you know, okay, that's what the Bible says. It tells me uh, don't cuss people out. Okay, I ain't going to cuss you out. But I really want to cuss you out. I know you want to cuss them out, but the Bible says don't do it, so I'm just not going to do it. 24 hours. Can y'all commit to that? 24 hours. Okay? Just do what the Bible say. Right? If it tells you to study to be quiet, shut up. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> All right, that's it. We're stopping right here. <laughs> right where you are. For the next 24 hours, just look up what the Word of God says and do what the Word of God says. And when you go to small group, I want you to give a testimony of how that all worked out. And I dare you to try God at his word. God's looking at your life. He said, you get out. Just get, move, move. Let me drive. I don't know about y'all, but I, my life turned out better when I started letting God drive. Sometimes I get back in there and I mess it up, but then he'll still, he'll still autocorrect. He'll still fix the route. He'll still get me back on track. 
Today, God's looking at your life. You're looking at your own life. He's showing you where you are. You're saying, Pastor, yep, I am that person. I've been drinking seawater. I've been messing up. I've been looking in all the wrong spots. But today, I want to get it right. I'm going to make this commitment for the next 24 hours. I'm just going to do what the Word of God says, Pastor. I'm going to do it. But I need prayer. Because so often, I'm just, I just want to keep on doing my own thing. And I get distracted. I've, I'm, I'm, I'm doing all these things. And I'm injured. I'm hurting. And I can't see, but today, today I want to try it God's way. The Bible says, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Today somebody needs to draw near to him, and if that's you, you're saying, Pastor, I'm ready to draw near to God. I want to walk as a disciple. I want to grow in my faith. But I want you to pray for me. I want you to just right where you are, just slip your hand up. You're making a commitment today. You're saying, I want a deeper relationship with Jesus. Every head's bowed, every eye's closed. Nobody's looking at you except Jesus. Just lift your hand up. I want to pray for you this morning. Thank you for those in your honesty. Thank you for your commitment because God's moving. But our job is to get in position. As we get in position, God's going to move. So I want to pray for you this morning. Maybe also there's somebody who doesn't know Jesus. You've heard this message and you're saying, I don't know Jesus as my Lord and Savior, but I want to. But I feel like there's this, I've got so much sin in my life, I can't see how God will love somebody like me. I got good news for you. The Bible says that even though your sins are red like scarlet, God will wash you whiter than snow. See, Peter talked about in the, mess, in, the, in the scripture, he said that we are a royal priesthood. The identity says that you are a royal priesthood. You are a chosen generation. Guess what? No matter where you are, God chose you. If you're here hearing this message today, guess what? God chose you. If you want to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'm going to say a prayer with you. And I, want, to, I want you just to re- repeat after me. This is between you and God, God and you. As, I, as we pray this prayer, as you repeat these words, I want you to believe them in your heart. It's a simple prayer, but in this prayer, we acknowledge the fact that we've sinned against God. In this prayer, we ask him for forgiveness. In this prayer, we ask that he will come into our hearts and that we will be born again. And his Holy Spirit will live on the inside of us, helping us to live a life that pleases God, that fulfills us, and that gains us access to eternal life. I want to pray that prayer. If that's you, I want you to repeat these words after me. It's very simple. It just says this. Say this with me. Say, Lord, I'm a sinner, and I need Jesus. I've messed up. I've made mistakes. But I believe that you died for me. I believe you love me. I believe you went to the cross. You paid the price of my sin. I believe that you went to the grave. And I believe that you rose from the dead. Come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me clean. And live on the inside of me. Say this with me. Say, I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. While your heads are still bowed, your eyes are still closed. Somebody has made a commitment to Jesus to be saved. You might be online. You might be here in person. I want to also pray for those who are saying, Pastor, I want to grow as a disciple. I might be an infant. I might be a child. I want to grow. I want to grow up into my salvation. I'm tired of feeding my carnal nature. I want to live with a transformed mind. I want to live in victory. And I want to learn how to use this word. See, the Bible says that the word is a sword. That means it's a weapon. And the things that are defeating you, you have everything in your command. God has given us all that we need. But today, he's calling us to partake of the word of God, to desire for pure spiritual milk. The most important thing you can do is not to go home and cut on a TV. It's not to go home and uh, uh, hop on your phone, but it's to get into the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from God. So today, Father, we pray for those, Lord, who are desiring to grow up into their salvation. I pray that we will long for the pure spiritual milk. And Lord, I pray, Father, you would raise up disciples in this house. I pray you would transform lives. God, anoint us to walk forward in what you called us to walk in. God, today, Lord, we believe that you are doing great things here in this church, that you are doing great things in each of our lives. And we stand on the word. We stand on the promises today. We put our faith and our trust in you. 
Change us forever for your glory in Jesus' name. And for the next 24 hours, God, I pray, Lord, that we'd have such an experience by being obedient to the word of God that we would see so many results that God was saying, I'm, I'm, I'm never going back. God, you're in the driver's seat. I'm, I'm not going to keep trying to carry the one or figure it out because I keep getting the wrong answer. Today, God, I'm going to do it your way. So, Lord, I pray for powerful testimony. I pray for mind-blowing change in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We give you glory and we give you praise for this time of hearing your word. Seal the word in our hearts so that the enemy cannot steal it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen, amen. I pray you got something from today's message. What are we doing for the next 24 hours? Okay, that sounds decent. Okay, I was there. I don't want to re-preach this whole message. <laughs> no, but we, we are just so grateful for everyone who's here today. Grateful, grateful, grateful for uh, what's been spoken into your life. Uh, we're going to transition now to our offering. Before we do, though, um, I want to... Uh, Give a few quick invitations. Again, if you are a first-time guest, make sure you see me at the end of service. Uh, if you have a prayer request, a prayer need, two things, two things. If you have a prayer request, you want somebody to pray for you, I want you to grab one of these blue cards, fill it out. You can drop it off in the basket in the back, or the box in the back, rather, or you can bring it up to me. We have a prayer team that is praying for people, praying for needs. On top of that, though, if you want prayer this morning, we did not have a full altar call. But if you have prayer for anything in your life, I want you to meet me up here at the front. We've got some of our ministers who will be praying for people. If you have a prayer request, you want somebody to pray over your life for whatever that reason or whatever that issue is, our prayer team is right here, right? If you have an unspoken request or unsolicited or solicited request, you can also fill out one of these cards. Secondly, secondly, if you are ready to connect to this ministry, you're saying, I think this is the place for me. I, matter of fact, I know this is the place for me. I've been coming here for a while, or maybe it's even your first Sunday. You're saying, Pastor, I want to grow. I want to be a disciple. I want to join and connect to this church. I believe it's the place, right? Sometimes uh, we need to be transplanted and rooted so that we can grow to our full potential. This is a place where healthy things grow. So I want to be your pastor. We want to be your church family. If you are believing that, that God wants to, is calling you to, to be a member of this church, simply grab one of these green cards, fill it out that says, I'm ready to connect. By filling that out, we'll get you plugged into our next new discipleship class, uh, get you plugged into a small group, get you plugged into relationship, and help you to walk forward into everything God has called you to be and do in this life. Amen. But if that's for you and you're ready to connect, grab that card, fill it out, drop it off back there, or bring it to me, and we'll get you plugged in. Last but not least, we're going to have an offering. Um, so I want to encourage you to give as the Lord has placed in your heart. We are called to give sacrificially and called to give cheerfully. If you are here for the first time, we never tell you what to give. We just tell you how, right? The how to give means give cheerfully and give sacrificially. Uh, well, you can give your, your offering uh, by texting the amount to the number on the screen. You can also give online at our website, or if you want to give in person, we have a box in the back. You can give with an envelope as well. But we want to thank you in advance for your giving. Uh, this church has never had to have a $100 line. We never had to have a fish fry, right, because people faithfully give. So we are grateful for that, and thank you in advance for that giving. With that being said, we're going to pray over that giving. We're also going to have the benediction, and we're going to get ready to be dismissed. Y'all ready to go home? Well, not go home. We're going to do... Uh, uh, why therapy? So Gwen will be back up right after some food. So some people are going home, but some people are going to stay and really get that next step. Amen. Uh, so we're going to have the benediction if we will bow together uh, to be dismissed from this portion of the service. God, thank you so much for this morning service. Thank you for your presence being in this place. We are grateful, God, because your spirit is real. Your spirit is moving. You are transforming and changing lives. We believe there's nothing too hard for you, God, and we, st we take you at your word. So, Lord God, 